Uh, good morning, everybody. How's it going? It is Tuesday the 14th, and we're going to look at some heresies here. Um, Apollinarianism, Nestorianism, and Monophysitism. I know those sound pretty exciting, but first I want to take a look at just a little review of Arianism, and then we'll take off into our new heresies. All right, last time we were looking at Gnosticism and Arianism, and I just wanted to touch on Arianism once again, because all of these heresies that we're going to look at, uh, what we have already, Arianism, Apollinarianism, Nestorianism, Monophysitism, are Christological heresies, and they're dealing with um, who Christ is. So they're very, very important heresies in the early church. Now, Arianism... Okay, we have Arius was a priest from Alexandria in Egypt, um, and he had an, an erroneous interpretation of the son's relationship to the father. Arius claimed that Jesus was not eternally God and thus not equal to the father. And in essence, what Arius did was de deny the uh, divinity of Christ. We're going to see that he looked at him, or we have seen Arius looked at Christ as higher than humanity, but lower than God. Now today, we're going to look at Apollinarianism. Um, so, uh, and these three will be the last of the uh, 4th and 5th century heresies that we look at. The last three being Apollinarianism, Nestorianism, and Monophysitism. Then we'll take a look at the Protestant Reformation, and then ecumenism, and interfaith dialogue. And after we cover the material up to page 59, we will move on to the next mark of the church. Um, so we're still in the one mark, and then we're going to move on to the holy mark. But first, uh, Apollinarianism and uh, Apollinaris of Laodicea. Who was Apollinaris of Laodicea? Apollinaris of Laodicea was born around 310 AD and died around 390 AD. He was known as Apollinaris the Younger, since his father, who was also a priest, was also named Apollinaris. So Apollinaris the Younger received a good secular education and a good religious education. He served in the local church as a lector. And like Arius, um, he was engaged in controversy. So Apollinaris was excommunicated a couple times. And one of these excommunications uh, was given to Apollinaris for uh, giving assistance and hospitality to St. Athanasius the Great, who was the great saint against the Arians. So we see associations with people against Arius. So Apollinaris is going to be an anti-Arian. Now, um, around the year 361, Apollinaris was elected bishop by the Nicene community of Laodicea. And once again, the uh, Nicene community is representing um, the Orthodox community of the Nicene Council. So he's still on the Orthodox camp here. Apollinaris had uh, or Orthodox intentions, but he went too far in the defense of Christ's divinity. Arius held that Christ was not as divine as God, but more divine than humanity. And Apollinaris goes the other direction. And as your textbook states, Apollinaris ardently supported the Orthodox position regarding the divinity of Christ against the Arians, but his unguided fervor led him into heresy. So he affirmed that Christ had a human body. Apollinaris denied the existence of a human mind and will in Christ. Therefore, it would follow that Christ did not have a complete human life as a man. 
So Christ had no human mind and will. Uh, we can look at the human mind as the intellect. So no human intellect and will. And we know that human intellect and the will are faculties of the soul. So Apollinaris is essentially teaching that Christ had no human soul. And this teaching is incompatible with the church's teaching that Christ is true God and true man, sharing completely our human experience. So what I want you to remember about this is he was an anti-Aryan. So he was against the Arian heresy, Apollinaris. He was elected bishop by a Nicene community, which is a bishop, or excuse me, a community that is following the Nicene Creed. In his fervor to defend, defend the divinity of Christ in the face of the Arian heresy, he went too far the other way. So he went to the other extreme. And he supported the divinity of Christ over the full humanity of Christ. And he was also condemned for it. So Apollinaris was condemned in 381 by the First Ecumenical Council of Constantinople. So also, um, there is one more thing uh, to think about when looking at the heresies on pages 154 and 156. And this is a very important thing. If you look at the main players responsible for these heresies, you can see a theme or a common thread. We have Arius, Apollinaris, Nestorius. They were all educated men, and they were all in holy orders. And there's an ascending uh, flavor to it. Arius was an Alexandrian priest, as we said. And he was condemned at Nicaea in 325. Apollinaris is the bishop of uh, Laodicea. Um, he's condemned at Constantinople in 381. And Nestorius is patriarch of Constantinople, uh, condemned at the Council of Ephesus in 431. So we see Arius priest, Apollinaris bishop, Nestorius Patriarch of Constantinople. Now, Patriarch of Constantinople is like one of the uh, ancient uh, uh, honorific titles that a bishop could have of a, uh, one of the uh, ancient Christian sees. So the five ancient Christian um, patriarchates would be Rome, Jerusalem, Antioch, Constantinople, and Alexandria. And we have the Patriarch of Constantinople as a heretic.